Now what we're going to be looking at is now I need to be able to figure out what the magnitude is. So the magnitude of PQ, so we have our line PQ. That's initial, and that's your terminal point. Right? And now what we want to do is we want to figure out what is, the, what is this length? What is this distance of PQ? So to find the magnitude of PQ, we're going to use, we're going to apply the distance formula, right? If you want to find the distance between two points in geometry, we apply the distance formula. Well, guess what? With a vector, if I want to find the distance from my initial to my terminal side, I still have to apply my um, distance formula. So the distance formula is going to be the square root. And then remember, it's going to be the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. However, when dealing with p and q, where here's my p and q, and here I have p1 comma q, or p1 comma p2. Here I have q1 comma q2. So when plugging them into the distance formula, the change in my x's is going to be q1 minus p1 squared plus q2 minus p2 squared. All right. Now let's go back to our component form real quick. If you remember, here's how we found component form, right? Q1 minus P1, that gives you what? V1. So just a little FYI, if you already have a vector that's in component form, right? If you already have something that you already know it's in component form, you can simply just write it as V1 squared plus V2 squared. Okay. So you don't have to go from here converting it to component form and then find the magnitude, because when you plug it in, you already are converting it to your component form and then find the magnitude. All right? So do you guys do, let's go back to our, uh, actually, I don't know what those, I don't know what those uh, problem worked in there. But let's see. Do we have a problem? Let's do 4, negative 7, negative 1, 5. So let's say this is. So let's say we have p is equal to 4, negative 7, and q is equal to negative 1, 5. Okay? So let's go and see what this would look like. So I have 4, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then I have negative 5 up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh? Sorry? So there's my p, and that's my q, right? So if I wanted to find what is the distance of that, all I'm simply going to do is just plug that into my formula to find the magnitude. So I'll just say the magnitude of p over q is going to equal now the square root of q1, which is negative 1, minus 4 squared plus uh, 5 minus 7 squared. Well, negative 1 minus 4 is going to give me a negative 5 squared plus 5 minus negative 7 is now going to give me a 12 squared, which equals now the square root of 25 plus 144 which equals the square root of 169. 169. And then we know that the square root of 169 is equal to 13. So that means the distance from p to q is going to equal 13. And we know that also if we wanted to find what v1 and v2 were, you guys can see this. This would be negative 5, 12. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that would be your component form or your vector. Notice how the component form of the vector, you don't really need to find it out, but I just wanted to show it to you. Notice how the component form of your vector right, starts at 0, 0, 
goes to negative 512, but the distance from your initial point to your terminal point of your component form or of your directional um, line is still going to have a magnitude or a distance of 13. Anybody have any questions on that? That's it. Component form and vectors. You can do that. Good.